Ukrainian attacks continue to degrade Russia's military capabilities in the occupied Crimean Peninsula, the UK's Defense Ministry reported on social media, citing intelligence data. The report mentioned a recent attack by the Ukrainian army on a maritime oil terminal in Feodosia. On the 7th of October, the Ukrainian military attacked the terminal, the largest on the peninsula used for trans-shipping oil products for the Russian occupiers. Earlier in March, this terminal was struck by Ukrainian drones, according to British intelligence. They also noted that in 2024, Ukrainian strikes on Crimea targeted air defense systems, airfields, command centers, naval and logistical facilities, and the Kirsch Strait crossing. Ukrainian attacks continue to incrementally degrade Russia's military capabilities on the Crimean Peninsula, the UK Defense Ministry concluded. After the Ukrainian strike on the maritime oil terminal in Feodosia, the fire was extinguished after nearly seven days. The invaders set up mobile refueling stations, which changed locations to avoid further Ukrainian attacks. The Russian High Command ordered fuel stations to remain in one location for only 12 hours. Earlier, British intelligence wrote that Russia was covering the Crimean Bridge with a physical barrier, air defense forces and a range of other means, hoping to protect it from further Ukrainian attacks. Russians are reportedly constructing a new structure parallel to the Crimean Bridge running alongside the main bridge. Actually, this is another bridge, though its purpose remains unclear. This is according to the Crimean Wind Telegram channel. The post notes that piles are being transported on ships and barges and driven into the seabed to establish the structure. In addition, Russia is said to be intensifying security efforts for the illegal bridge structure, including installing metal towers on Tuzla Island adjacent to the bridge, outfitted with platforms for anti-aircraft systems. Sergei Aksyonov, the so-called head of Russian-occupied Crimea, has proposed replacing the term new regions, which Russians use for occupied territories of Ukraine with historical regions, claiming that these lands have always belonged to Russia. Aksyonov argued that these territories were part of the Russian Empire and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics and therefore should not be called new. The rhetoric from Kremlin collaborators is yet another attempt to justify the annexation of Ukrainian lands and attempts to erase Ukraine's historical and cultural heritage. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Thursday his country has intelligence information that 10,000 troops from North Korea are being prepared to join Russian forces fighting against his country. Zelensky did not go into detail about the claim that came a day after U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell said that Washington and its allies are alarmed by North Korea's military support for Russia's war in Ukraine but couldn't confirm Ukrainian claims that soldiers were sent to fight for Moscow. From our intelligence we've got information that North Korea sent tactical personnel and officers to Ukraine, Zelensky told reporters at a press conference with NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta. They are preparing on their land 10,000 soldiers, but they didn't move them already to Ukraine or to Russia, he added. The Ukrainian leader's comments raised the stakes for his Western allies as he met in Brussels with European Union leaders and then NATO defense ministers to discuss his victory plan to end the country's devastating war with Russia. Ukraine, uh, Ukraine truly deserves to become the so they thought NATO member one day, and we must do everything to ensure this happens. That is why the first fundamental point in the victory plan is the invitation to NATO. Ukrainians have shown that we can defend shared values and we are standing against Russia, the biggest threat to Europe and global peace. In our revolutions, we've proven that we truly value democracy. We have limited time for questions, I'm afraid, so I will do my best to take as many as we can. I'll start with the BBC on the first point. Strengthening of Ukraine, it's not only depending on the weapon, this kind or that kind, it's depending on the will. If, if our partners will not lose their unity, we will not lose and this strength. And we will not use that unity. Uh, 
we, we will not lose that unity. It's you so can impossible. count on that. And my message today to Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin is that if he thinks we will, we will not. And today again is evidence. Look what Australians have done, what the Germans are doing, what the US has done today. Uh, again, uh, announcing uh, almost half a billion in uh, anti-missile defense package. systems. General, uh, you mentioned that, and that has been mentioned before, that China is a decisive Because Putin will never stop. Just, just if we will not stop him, he will never stop. It's he likes the process. He's fan of the war. I gave today the example, very interesting example, when we tried to save our north part and went through their border on Kursk region. You know what the people said to our soldiers? You are NATO. You are Americans. Russian people said to our soldiers. Our soldiers, Ukrainian-speaking guys, but of course they know Russian language, 100%. They begin to answer in Russian language, no. They said in Russian, no, 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 we're Ukrainians. They said, that, and Russians, these old people, they said, no, no, you are NATO, we know. You are NATO. They've been very surprised that we're Ukrainians. So you understand in what disinformation they live. So Putin built such government, he took the rights of his people, and now he is moving to the death, young people. That means that he will never stop. He likes this world, and he will protect his world. That's why we have to finish. And the, no, not finish. Yes, yes. Better to finish with him. Yes, it's really. But to stop him, I'm, I'm mean to stop him. Understand? Uh, uh, supporting Russia, and now. North Korea uh, trying to send personnel to fight Europe. From our intelligence, we've got information that North Korea sent technical personnel and officers to Ukraine on temporary occupied territories. And they are preparing on their land 10,000 soldiers, but they didn't move them already to Ukraine or to, to Russia. So we, when we will have this information, of course, we will raise up this question, but because this will be the second. I think it's already the second country which uh, involved to this war against us. Thank you.